Hey, it's T. I'm one of the geniuses at Ask Zyla. So let's just get started with the live session. Okay, so the first question is dealing with uh, factoring. It's given as an expression. I'm just going to rewrite it. So we have 2a minus 5 squared minus 2, 2a minus 5 minus 15. Okay, so what we should do is replace these terms with some variable. So let's say let a is equal to 2a minus 5 so that we have an equation that we can factor that we're very familiar with. Right? So this we should be able to factor as usual. So we take the a and c term, we have negative 15. What two numbers multiply to negative 15 that add up to negative 2? Right? So we can have negative 5 and plus 3. So we do decomposition for those two. So we have a plus 3a minus 5a minus 15. Okay. Then we perform grouping for the first two terms. Right. We can factor out any common terms that we have. So we can factor out a from the first group to leave me with a plus 3. And then we can factor out a negative 5, leaving me with a plus 3 again. Right, so since we have the common term, a plus 3, we can factor that out from both of them to give me a plus 3 and then a minus 5 as my two factors. But we're not done because we said a <coughs> was equal to 2a minus 5. So what I'm going to do is substitute this inwards and simplify. So I have 2a minus 5 plus 3 and 2a minus 5 minus 5 leaving me with 2a minus 2 and just 2a but we can simplify this further we can take out a 2 to leave me with 4a and then a minus 1 All right so we're substituting a instead of 2a minus 1 and then we're factoring like we normally would we perform decomposition we perform some grouping we came up with the two factors and then we substituted the initial value back in to simplify and come up with our term which was this should be yeah we factored out a 2 so we end up with 4a and then a minus 1 oh i did make a mistake so this ends up being negative 10. Right. So we can factor out the 2 for this, we can factor out the 2 for this. So I have 2a minus 1, this one I have 2a minus 5. So all in all I have 4a minus 1 and a minus 5. Thank you. Okay, so let's jump to the next question. So this is dealing with the grade 12 advanced um, calculus vectors tangent lines question. So it's telling us to find the normal line to y equals negative x squared plus 5x that has a slope of negative 2. Right? So we asked to find the normal line. Since we are finding the normal line, that means we first find the derivative of this. Right? If the normal has a slope of negative 2, that means the tangent should have a value of 1 over 2. Right? It's the negative reciprocal. So we're trying to find which values for my first derivative would give me 1 over 2. Okay, so my derivative ends up being negative 2x plus 5, and then I'm replacing the y prime with 1 over 2 to find which x values will give me 1 over 2. So this ends up being x is equal to, uh, I can bring 1 over 5 minus 5 is equal to negative 2x. Okay. This should eventually give me 9 over 4. This is 2. Okay, so I have the value which gives me a tangent, which gives me my first derivative of half, so I know which position it's in. So now what I'm going to do is find that exact point. Right? So I know my equation said negative x squared plus 5x. So I'm going to substitute the x into my original function to find the y value. 
right? So because I need a coordinate. So I end up with 9 over 4 squared minus plus 5, 9 over 4. Okay, so all in all, when I simplify, I end up with 99 over 16. So I have a coordinate now. I have 9 over 4, and I have 99 over 16 as my y value. Why do we need this? Because we need an equation for the normal. We already know the slope, which is negative 2x. We need the point, so we can substitute it in to find my y-intercept. Okay, so now since I have the point, I'm going to substitute it in. I have 99 over 16 is equal to negative 2 times 9 over 4 plus b. Okay, and then I'm going to isolate for my b, which ends up being a really awkward number, which is 171 over 16. What's my final equation? I have a slope of negative 2. I have a line set of 171 over 16. This is the equation to my normal. And the key points are that I needed to know <clears throat> that the normal means that I have a negative reciprocal for my first derivative. That means my y prime should be 1 over 2. Okay. And then I found which x values would give me that y prime. And then I found a coordinate, which I plugged in to find my line to set, which led me to my final equation. <clears throat> So we're going to do question 9 for this one. So a sugar sculpture is a tri uh, triangular pyramid. Uh, 18 centimeters high. The base is an equilateral triangle with 3 meter sides. Let's determine the volume of the sculpture. Okay. So for the volume of the pyramid, we have one third the area of the base times the height. Okay. So we know the base is equal to triangle, meaning each side is going to be 3. Okay. So we can set up an equal triangle, saying 3, 3, and 3, to find the area. Right? We need the height of this triangle. So how do I find the height? I know this can be split up evenly to 1.5 and 1.5. And then I can use Pythagoras theorem to find the height. I can say 3 squared is equal to h squared plus 1.5 squared. And then h is going to be the square root of 3 squared minus 1.5 squared. Okay, So this should give me 2.6. So the area for the triangle, or the base, is going to be 1 half Three, which is my base, and my height is going to be 2.6. So my area ends up being 3.89. Okay, so we have all the components to find the volume of the pyramid. So what I'm going to do is volume of the pyramid is one third the area of the base times the height. So I have one third if the base is 3.89 and my height is 18. So this in total gives me 23.4 as my volume. Right? If they've given me they've given me units, so I'm gonna say two, two, two. Mm -hmm. So one thing to note is the units are different that they've given us. Right. So this is in meters, this is in centimeters. So that's important to note. And right. so what we should have done is this should be 3. This was fine, actually, 2.8. What's it? 2.6. This was fine. This was in meters. I should have done... 389 centimeters instead. Okay, so this should give me 2340 centimeter cube.
What is it for you? Doesn't matter? It's not the Oh, okay. So it should be just everything should be in meters. So that's just the typo. So this is to uh, 23.4 centimeter cube. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to jump to the next question. Once again, if you have any questions that you want to submit, send us a message. All right, so we asked to solve this linear equation. So we have x over 2 plus 1 over 5 is equal to 4x minus 1 over 3. Okay, so what we could do is turn these into find the lowest common denominator for all of these. So the lowest common denominator for 2, 5, and 3 is going to be 30. So I'm going to multiply the left side by 30, the right side by 30, to get rid of the denominators. Right, so I end up with 15x plus 6 and 120x minus 10. Okay, then I'm going to collect the like terms to give me 105x is equal to 16. So x ends up being 16 over 105. Okay, so we're going to jump to the next question. So this is um, an equation of a circle question. So they told us the diameter of the circle ranges from A to B. Determine the equation of the circle. Okay, so if the diameter is going from this to this, we can find what the diameter is by finding the length between these two points, or the distance. Right? So the length, I'm going to say, is the square root of the x's subtracted and the y subtracted squared. So I have 7 minus 1 squared plus negative 3 minus 5 squared. Okay? This should give me 6 squared plus negative 8 squared, which should give me a total of uh, just 100 square root, which gives me 10. So I know my diameter is 10. So I also know my radius is half of that, which is 5. Okay. But we don't know if the midpoint is exactly at the origin, so we need to go and find what it is. Right. So I'm going to find the midpoint by doing x1 plus x2 over 2 and then y1 plus y2 over 2. Okay. This is 7 plus 1 over 2, and this is negative 3 plus 5 over 2. This should give me a midpoint of 4 and 1. So that tells me it's not at the origin, so my equation for the circle would not be the same as if it were at the origin. So I have x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. Since I'm not at the origin, so I'm going to say x minus my midpoint now is 4 squared plus y minus my new point. midpoint is 1. 1 squared is equal to my radius, which is 5 squared. And then I can simplify this by just squaring the 5 to give me 25. Okay, so this is how we construct the equation of a circle when my midpoint is not the origin, when it's not 0, 0. So I need to find what the midpoint is, and then I'm going to subtract and put it into brackets inside my x squared and y squared. So this is a grade 12 advanced functions question where we're solving trig equations. So we're given an equation, we're asked to solve x to the nearest 100, where x could be between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is get all the terms into one side. So I have 3 tan squared x minus 2 tan x minus 1 is equal to 0. <clears throat> the reason I'm doing that is now it resembles a quadratic. So I'm just going to say a is equal to tan x. So I'm going to substitute 
each of the tan x's to give me 3a squared minus 2a minus 1 is equal to 0. And then I'm going to factor this. Okay, so 3 and negative 1, I get negative 3. What two numbers multiply to negative 3, add up to negative 2? Right. It should be negative 3 and plus 1. So I'm going to decompose the negative 2 to negative 3a and plus a. Right. And then I'm going to keep distribute this and then group the first two terms and the last two terms and common factor. So I have 3a, a minus 1, plus 1, a minus 1. So I can't really factor anything out from the second one. This gives me 3a plus 1 and then a minus 1 is equal to 0. Okay. So at this point I can substitute that a was equal to tan x. Okay. So this gives me 3 tan x plus 1 and tan x minus 1 is equal to 0. And then I have to solve for two cases. When is 3 tan x plus 1 equal to 0? And when is tan x minus 1 equal to 0? Okay. So this, I'm going to solve 3 tan x plus 1 is equal to 0. And this, I'm going to say tan x minus 1 is equal to 0. Okay. So if I isolate the tan x, this gives me negative 1 over 3. This one gives me tan x is equal to 1. Okay. So I can find what x is by taking the negative, the inverse of tan, so negative 1 over 3. This should give me 0.32 radians. Okay. So, but the important thing to note is that tan was a negative ratio. If it's a negative ratio and it gave me 0.32, Okay. That doesn't tell me everything because I need to figure out which quadrant it is in. Right? If tan is negative, that means it's either in quadrant 2 or in quadrant 4. Okay. So I need to find out what this principal angle is and I need to find out what this principal angle is. So to find those, I found what, sorry, this was the tan of the inverse of the positive value. <clears throat> so in order to find the principal angles, I'm going to say this is in my second quadrant, so I'm going to say pi uh, pi minus 0.32. Okay, this should give me 2.82 radians if it's in my second quadrant. Okay, if it's in my fourth quadrant. I'm simply going to say x will be 2 pi minus my radians, which is 0.32, to give me 5.96 radians. Right, so my x could be 2.82 or it could be 5.96 right now. <clears throat> Just to recap what we did, I didn't find the tan inverse of the negative 1 over 3 I, I, because I wanted the related acute angle, right? So I just made it positive. So I know it gave me the related acute as 0.32. And then I went ahead and found when is tan negative in the second and the fourth. And then I transformed my angles accordingly. Okay, I'm not done yet because I've only solved one of the factors. I need to solve when tan x is equal to 1 now. Okay. So when is tan x equal to 1? Okay. So we can find that by again looking at when is tan x positive. So it's positive in the first quadrant and in the third quadrant. How do I find what the value is in the first quadrant? I can just take the tan inverse of 1 to give me pi over 4. Okay. So how do I find the, the value of x in the third quadrant? I'm going to do x is equal to pi plus pi over 4. Right, this should give me 5 pi over 4. 
So these are my two values for my second factor. So all in all, I have x could be 2.82, 5.96, pi over 4, or 5 pi over 4. These are all the possible values for my x. Right, so get familiar with transforming the related acute to the different quadrants to figure out all the possible values for a trig equation. Okay, so we're going to jump to the next question. So we're dealing with logarithms right now. We're asked to simplify this as much as we can. So we're going to do this first. We have log base 4. 3 of 16. Okay, so what we should be doing is converting these roots into an exponent. So I have log base 4, 16 to the power of 1 over 3. Okay, because if it's an exponent, we can use the log bars to bring it to, as a coefficient. So I have 1 over 3 log 4 of 16 then. So we're basically saying some number, what exponent should 4 be raised to to give me 16? Right? That's what logarithms are essentially asking us. So we know 4 can be raised to the power 2 to give me 16. So I'm going to replace this with 2. So I have an answer of 2 over 3 as a simplified log. Okay. And for the second one, I have log base 3, 9 times square root 27. Okay. If two numbers are being multiplied, we can again use the log laws to say that log base 3 of 9, separate them as an addition. And then we have log base 3 of square root 27. So now I'm going to evaluate 3 log base 3 of 9, right? once again 3 is being raised to some exponent to give me 9, what is that exponent? That we should know is to be 2, so I'm going to simplify this to just 2. Okay? And once again I'm going to resolve the square root into just an exponent, so I have 27 to the power of 1 over 2. Bring the exponent to the outside, so I still have 2 plus 1 over 2. Log 3 of 27. So I have 2 plus 1 over 2 log 3. What exponent should 3 be raised to to give me 27? It should be 3. So this results to just 3. And then I have 2 plus 3 over 2. I can simplify this to be 4 plus 3. So I have 7 over 2. Okay, so logarithm rules essentially tell us that exponents can be brought down as a coefficient. If two terms are being multiplied inside my logarithm, that means I can separate them as two separate logs that are being added. If two things are being divided inside the logarithm, I can separate them as two logs that are being subtracted. Okay, so get familiar with the log laws as well for your exams. Okay, so we'll do one last question. We're doing a calculus vectors question. We're dealing with plane intersections. So we're given a line. So we have r is equal to negative 4, negative 3, 1. <clears throat> so this is in vector form. So I can write the parametric equations as x is equal to negative 4 plus s, y is equal to negative 3 plus s, z is equal to 1 plus s. Okay. They're telling us that it intersects the x, z plane uh, and the y, z plane at points A and B, respectively. Find the lengths of the line segment A, B. Okay. So A is some is the x, z plane. Right? So there's an x value, there's no y value, and there's a z, z value. Right? And B is the YZ coordinate plane, so that means 
we have no x value, we have a y value, and we have a z value. These are generic equations for the coordinates for the x z plane and the y z plane. Okay, so what does this tell us? We can apply these to the parametric equations given. Right? So x1 is negative 4 plus s, 0 is equal to negative 3, this is point 0.8, 0 is equal to negative 3 plus s, and z1 is equal to 1 plus s. This immediately shows that we can solve the y equation to show that s is equal to 3. Okay, and then we can substitute these back in to find out the x and the y value. So x is negative 4 plus 3 to give me negative 1. z is 1 plus 3 to give me 4. So my point is going to be negative 1, 0, and 4 for my a. I'm going to do the same for my b. I have x1 is equal to, in this case, sorry, I don't have an x, so I just have 0, is equal to negative 4 plus s. And then I have y1 is equal to negative 3 plus s, z1 is equal to 1 plus s. So once again, the x shows that s is equal to 4. I'm going to substitute those into the y and z to show that negative 3 plus 4 is equal to 1. Z1 is equal to 1 plus 4 to give me 5. Okay, so my point is 0, 1, 5. Okay, so I have my A and B points. Now they want me to find the distance between these two points, the line segment that's formed between A and B. So to find the distance, I'm going to add the, take the difference of the x's, y's, and z's, and squares, right? So negative 1 minus 0 squared plus 0 minus 1 squared plus 4 minus 5 squared. All of these give me square roots of 1 plus 1 plus 1, which gives me a distance of square root 3. Okay, so that about does it for us today. So thank you for tuning in. Hope this has been helpful. Once again, we we'll ask Zyla if you have any questions, any math concepts that you want to explain, send us a message. We'll be happy to help you out. And this has been T from Ask Zyla. Hope you have a good night. Take care.